we can see there's all that height above the water, there's not much below. So what's keeping that ship upright? Let's have a look at a diagram and start to understand why. I've got to add the underwater section to this diagram, so if we zoom out slightly, we can now see we've got the large amount above the water, the small amount below, and the water line in the middle. So what forces are actually acting on the ship? Well, we've got the weight, which is pulling it down, and that is balanced by the buoyancy, which is pushing it up. Of course, if the weight is greater than the buoyancy, the ship would sink, and if the buoyancy is greater than the weight, the ship would continue to move upwards. With the buoyancy and weight in balance, of course, the ship is floating. But to work out why the ship doesn't tip over, we need to think about where exactly these forces are acting. And those points are the centre of gravity for the weight and the centre of buoyancy for the buoyancy. Let's take a look at the centre of gravity first. In this diagram, I've just added a few colours for different areas of the ship. We're going to be looking for the centre of gravity. Of course, if everything in the ship weighed exactly the same, the centre of gravity would be slap bang in the middle. Looking at the picture, however, we can see the engines, machinery, fuel, stores, all that sort of thing weighs an awful lot more than the cabins and passenger spaces, stuff like theatres, which are mainly just air. This has the effect of dragging the centre of gravity downwards. So we know the centre of gravity will be towards the bottom half of the ship. But what about the centre of buoyancy? Let's take this diagram now. For the centre of buoyancy, of course, we're interested in the stuff under the water. And to find the centre of buoyancy, all we need is the centre of the water plane area. So it's just the middle of the part of the ship that's under the water. So let's have a look at how we apply the centre of buoyancy and gravity, as well as weight and the force of buoyancy. I've now got on this diagram the centre of gravity in green and the centre of buoyancy in blue. The green arrow, of course, is showing that it's the weight of the ship that's pushing down, and the blue arrow is showing it's the buoyancy that's pushing up. What happens if we apply an external force? For example, some wind comes along. Well, that wind, we know fairly obviously, is going to push the ship over to one side. But why doesn't it just topple straight over? If we have a look down at the bottom, we can see that the centre of buoyancy has slid off to one side. This is because the underwater area has actually changed, and the geometric centre of that is now off the centre line. It's still the centre of the underwater area, but because the shape has changed, the centre of buoyancy has moved. Just rearranging our arrows slightly shows us the centre of buoyancy pushing up and centre of gravity pulling down and those arrows are slightly apart from each other. They're going to be creating a twisting kind of force, and that twisting force is going to act on the whole ship, and as soon as the wind stops, that force is going to push the ship upright again. But what about another example, where it's not an external force, it's an internal force? In this diagram, I've just omitted the arrows for the forces for now. The crew are going to put a weight off to one side of the ship. Now what effect does this have? All it will do is it will slide the centre of gravity off to one side. Much in the same way all the weight in the bottom of the ship pulls the centre of gravity down, a weight off to the side of the ship will pull the centre of gravity out. We can then draw on the two arrows, one for the centre of gravity and one for the centre of buoyancy, showing the forces that are acting. Now, as before, these two forces are creating a twisting moment, wanting to twist the ship over to one side. If we let those forces act now, we can see that the ship is going to lean over until the forces are in line again, until that centre of buoyancy is directly below the centre of gravity. And again, the centre of buoyancy has moved because the underwater area, the shape of that, has changed, and it's moved along far enough that the forces are now in balance again, and the ship is happily sat there albeit slightly lopsided. For the crew to correct this, of course, all they need to do is move that weight back into the centre of the ship. That will have the effect of moving the centre of gravity back onto the centre line of the ship, creating that twisting moment again, this time twisting the ship in the opposite direction. And as, it, as the two forces work together to bring the ship upright, centre of buoyancy again moves to the centre line below the centre of gravity, and everything stays in line. The ship stays upright. And that brings us to the end of this video. 
We've had a quick look at why ships float. We've looked at the center of gravity, center of buoyancy, how they work together to keep the ship upright.